what's a ship warfare game without missiles? Bum, 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 bum. And that's what we're going to working on in this tutorial. Being able to manipulate the missiles, spawn them or instantiate them at a point, drop them and have the on collision trigger, trigger a particular effect. It is awesome. It is missiles. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, first the demo behind me, that's the game. Check out the uh, earlier tutorials to catch up or take a look at all the comments, uh, all the code and the assets in the description below. Let's dive in. And here we are back. We left off with our method. We have our algorithm for outputting our enemy ship location. Let's uh, start off by testing that out and move into other aspects of the enemy and then missiles. Okay, let's see. Actually, instead of magic, let's actually just write. It's fairly easy at this point. What we need is we're going through the array, right? So we're going to go through, well, our list object here, our integer list. And then we would like to output the contents of it. So right before return, I just want to see what's going on here. This is for us. It wouldn't be needed for the gameplay. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside. So for each array, I should do a for int i equals zero. Now I'll just do num array. So for each tile num array, we'll call it num array dot length i plus plus. And then what will we print? Well, we'll do debug log, and I'm just calling it num array. Num array is going to be all the arrays within the list. I just kind of gave it a temporary name and it assumes that's what I'm talking about, right? So right here, int num array in enemy ships, it assumes that this variable is going to represent the arrays within it. And what am I going to print? Well, debug.log i. So I'll be outputting i. Let's go ahead, though, and since we're going to do this for each ship, let's do it like this. String temp equals uh, let's set it equal to nothing. Oh, semicolon. Yikes. So we got a temp equal to nothing. And then debug number. Oh, and then let's go ahead and do temp is going to now be plus equals whatever this is. We'll do a space. Let's do a comma space to make it more clear. This isn't going to be perfect, but it will accomplish what we need it to. And then after this for loop finishes, now we can great. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. All right, now we need a place where we actually call this because as of now we haven't called it, right? And when do we want it to be called? Well, of course we want it to be called when the player actually hits next, when they are done placing their uh, game pieces, their battle ships. All right, so play ship, play ship, da 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 da. Next is clicked. And so if it is clicked after this, right, what would we want to have happen? This is where we would need the game to progress and the enemy ship to be placed. We would also make the button disappear most likely, but for now I'm going to settle for place shipment. Yep. And, and we'll just have this be a public object. Just like that. Let me hit save on that. All right, let's go ahead and give this all a try. Save that. Perfect. Choop. And whoop. And this is all looking good. Let's go ahead and double check our. We need to create an object for our enemy. So I'll just do an empty object. Easiest way to go about that. I could even call this enemy manager if I want. I'm just going to leave it generic and say enemy. Let me give that my enemy script. And the only reason really we're doing this is to make it easier to manage within the building of the game itself, right? So let's go ahead and go to our game manager and drag in that enemy now to place the enemy script. Ooh, something's going on. What do we, oh, game manager. Maybe I missed a semicolon. 
Oh, yes, I forgot midstream because I ran up. Okay, enemy script. And now, whew, now we're going to use enemy script dot boom. This is how it works. There we are. Bit better there. And let me hit save on that. That uh, makes a heck of a lot more sense. Got a little ahead of myself. Okay. And just go into game mode for now. And our game managers here. There's the enemy script that we need. Drop that in and let's hit run. All right, let's place our ships. Ah, turn. <laughs> turn. It's just too fun. Okay, and now this is the placement of the enemy ships. So right here, this would be a horizontal placement. Now you can see that there's vertical, uh, horizontal, vertical, uh, horizontal. So kind of a nice spread. And we can see where those are actually placed. So that's working well. Awesome. Boom. Let's take go back over here now. We can get rid of this again, but I just wanted to make sure we could see what was going on there and how these ship placement for the enemy's boats was occurring. Keep in mind that that is all digital, right? We're not going to actually place those on the screen because we want to animate our missiles dropping and keep track of where those missiles have hit and all the fun aspects of the game that are involved with that. So the actual location is hidden from the player. The player doesn't get to see the other enemy ships, but we know the locations, well, at least the computer does, and they are random eyes. So that is awesome. So now what? Well, the obvious next logical step, that being said, is having the player attack, right? We want the player to start seeking out the enemy. How do they do that? Well, they're doing it by clicking on a tile, which we will use ray casting for, but we also are going to need the missile that they will be dropping. So I'm dropping back into scene mode. Hmm, where should I position me? Sure, something like this. But I need to go ahead into project and I already uploaded all of my assets. Keep in mind, all of the material that I am using is in the description, all of the game assets and things like that. I made the 3D stuff and everything else. I made sure it was Creative Commons zero, completely free. So not ships, but miscellaneous and my rocket. Drop that in there. Great. And I'm just going to leave this labeled as Whoa. If I can spell it, maybe click. All right. And let's take a look at it. So I know I'm going to want its size just to go through an individual tile. I'm probably. Let's not turn it every which way. Let's do 90 here, which does nothing. That's more of what we're looking for. Okay. Let's get it off over here. We are going to give it a rigid body. And it is ginormous. It is definitely a missile. Not messing around with these battleships. There we are. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, rigid body, certainly not 2D. And then we need a capsule collider on it. Now I'm going to use this collider uh, in a way that ensures that it, the tip of the missile can actually penetrate the board itself. Otherwise, it looks a bit strange, right? We want it to look like it's actually going through, quote unquote, the water just a bit. Now let's also scale this down. Um, I'm thinking maybe a fourth this size. With that in place and the collider in place, let me blow this collider up, though. Maybe something like that, and I'm just going to hit play. And this is already looking perfect. Obviously, we are going to want to center it on a tile, but just because at this point we actually have those ship locations, right? Those ship locations are going to exist and can be checked against this, against the randomized, randomized ship locations we've created. We just need a, well, a, a way to control this guessing and this action by the player. And then also the enemy needs to fight back. So they get a missile. The enemy gets a missile as well. All right, let's take a look here. Actually, I didn't attach a missile script. So let me move this over here and let's do that real quick. 
right? My missile's already on the screen, obviously. Click and add component. And just to be clear on what it is, I will creatively name it like always, missile script this time. Head over into my assets and drag this into my scripts folder. Perfect, and let's open this up. And the code for this script is gonna be relatively simple because the player is gonna be controlling it through ray casting, through clicking on a tile and in the game manager. So let's go ahead. And I'm just gonna use find to grab the game manager. With prefab, sometimes when you declare a variable as public, and then assign it depending on how you are configuring your prefab, it won't actually retain that information as a public variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the game manager using find. Game object. All right, there we are. And then for update, we don't need it. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff, goodbye. And instead, we're going to use an on collision because we have a collider. On collision enter is what I need. And what I'll be doing is we're going to have a method within the game manager itself called check hit. I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't flip out for now, but I'll go ahead and put And what are we passing it? Well, the game object that we collided with, which could be a tile. And then the we would go ahead and destroy the missile after that, because again, the missile does not need to stick around. It is gonna disappear once after it uh, impacts an item. So let's now save all of this. What we're going to want to do next is edit our tile script, right? Because of the, the ray casting that we'll be using, let me blow that up and quit cha. So we're going to edit this to make sure we know if the player has finished placing their items, pl finished placing their game pieces, and if they're actually clicking on a title to launch a missile. And we have done some of this already. With if missile hit is false, and we also check the collider name. What we're going to want to do now, tile clicked, is add a just a few variables to this. We want the ability to change a tile color. And so for that, we're going to have a color variable defined, which we already do. I was on it. And how this will work is hit color zero is going to be equal to the tiles original color so we're going to get that defined within start and just to start us off we'll also have the second index of the array also be equal to the original color, and that's gonna be edited based on interaction. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to add that interaction, that being said, so public void. And here we are. So this is gonna be called within the game manager to go ahead and change the tile color. Well, to redefine the color of whatever index we would like. And then we can just flip back and forth with this function. Like this. And so that will go ahead and switch the colors from one index to the other, which we have saved and have the ability to edit because notice both of these are public. The one other thing I wanna do while here is setting up an on collision because we actually don't have that yet and the missile well will be colliding with our tile. On collision enter, yep, that's great. And now if, So 
So if it's equal to missile, what are we going to want to do? We can set the variable that we just made at the top to true. And that's how we're going to track interaction with the missile. Now let's go ahead and do an else if on this. Whoops, not below the method inside of it. Ah, that's what's going on. I need brackets. Just move this up here. And now what I'm going to check is if it's the enemy missile. So there will be a tag for an enemy missile. It's going to be a separate object. Since we're here, though, let's get it added now. And what it will do is if it's an enemy's missile, I'm going to go ahead and set the tile color to be different. So I know that the enemy has guessed or striked that location. So first, I'll just make sure that hit color has zero is redefined. And I like this color. Kind of a bluish greenish just to mark the location that an enemy has guessed. And then we want to go ahead and set the renderer to be that color. Otherwise, that color won't show up for us. Boom. Oh, if I could spell hit properly, there we are. Let's just take a look at all that. This is looking good. And keep in mind, we don't have an enemy missile yet. I'm going to go ahead and save all this. Let's go ahead then and, well, let's make that enemy missile happen. How I will do so, zoop and zoop and maybe, is actually I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate our prefab already. And we'll make a new prefab out of it because we want it to be distinct from this missile. And let me pull this over here. Wacha. And oh, let's go ahead and create a tag for this and for the other. So we need enemy missile. We're going to hit save on that guy. And then we're going to need just missile for the other one. All right. Now. Let me go ahead and adjust the missile one to this. Uh, let's do it in the prefab, of course. Oh, not model. Where's my prefab? Oh, I have not prefabified. Great. OK, so let's go ahead and add that. Yep, let's go ahead and add a folder for that. And a prefab allows you to easily recreate an object, cloning it, if you will, many, many times. It's how we will, well, drop our missile many, many times. I'm just going to click and drag and drop. And I'll say, oh, original prefab is what I need here. And perfect. And it's tagged. We have a missile prefab. Now for our enemy missile, I need to get rid of this script. I'm going to actually create an independent script for this object. So we'll do that as well now. Enemy missile script. All right. And then the tag was enemy missile. And we have the capsule collider and rigid body. I'm going to actually color it a bit differently. So let me okay, look at my rocket here. And the gray is what I'll be changing. So I'm going to make a material and material right click create and material. I'm going to do a yellowish color. Maybe something like that. That's all fine. I'm going to say rename this guy to yellowish. And for this, I can just click and drag and drop it on the rocket. Maybe I want a bit darker. You can kind of finagle away at this. All right. I'm liking. All right. I'm liking that for our enemy rocket. So now I'm going to head back to my prefabs folder with it all set up. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that in as well. And we want an original prefab for it. So now we have an enemy rocket. We have the player's rocket. We have lots of rockets. Let's take a look at our enemy prefab script. I should drag that into our scripts and double click. Or our enemy missile script. And let's kind of load this up. For this, we're going to want access to the game manager, just like the missile script. So 
We also need access to the enemy script. We're going to want to store a tile location in this guy, so I'll call it target tile because we're going to have the enemy randomly pick a tile and that will be assigned to the target tile. This will just be the tile number and it doesn't need to be publicly available, but we will be making use of it. It's negative one right now, just so I know it doesn't exist yet. And that will throw an error if it attempts to use it before the game manager or the enemy script has actually picked a title to strike. Now in start, we need to go ahead. We declared enemy script and game manager. We need to define those. And I'll be using find again. And again, because of the prefabs, they won't have access to these if we make them public when it generates a prefab. So we're going to use find and that way it will have access. Because it can independently find and locate it instead of depending on a public variable that won't be defined when it is um, spawned live during the game. Oh, I got a, what's going on here? An extra E? Yikes. There we go, get component game manager. That looks fine. Oh, what's this? There we are. All right, and now I need enemy script. And honestly, I'm just gonna copy and paste, except enemy. And then what's the, what am I looking for? I need to grab the script component of our enemy. And then we're going to want an if statement. So this will be on collision. On collision, enter. And we're going to want to check if the object is a ship, because if the enemy hit a ship, they hit the player ship. Compare tag, and we'll need to make the tags for all of these ships, but we're gonna say, hey, is it a ship? If it is a ship, what do we wanna do? Well, we're gonna use a game manager method and function to create the uh, impact and the repercussions of it. So we'll leave this empty for now because I don't wanna fill in everything. And then let's go ahead and put an else that we will fill out once we tackle some of this in game manager. So let me hit save on all of this. And then what we're going to want to do in game manager, first thing we're going to want to do is grab our prefabs, right? So we have our missile and our missile, and we've already created our prefabs folder and we got them inside of it. So let's go ahead and add them to do that. I'm just going to, create an objects header. So I'm just going to copy that and da, 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 da. and this header just appears in inspect itself. And I'll just say objects just to keep things tidy. And both of these will be public for the game manager. So prefab enemy missile prefab. While we're adding objects, we might as well get the deck as well, because we're going to make that disappear. And what I mean by deck is that that they're sitting on. Once the game starts, we can make that go away. So this is looking good. And we have our setup complete already because we're, go we're going to definitely be using that. But what we're going to want to do is create that check hit. Eh, look at update hanging out down here. Get rid of that for her. Now let's create that check hit function that we had just added here, right? Check hit, but it doesn't exist in our game manager. And we're going to fix that now. So this will be a public void, obviously, to access it. We're going to need a public. It's not going to return anything, so void. And it does take a argument. So the parameter is a game object. And that game object is going to be the tile that was struck by the missile. And what's happening is when we click on a tile, the missile drops. When the missile hits a tile, it's going to run check hit, which we can now uncomment, and head over to our game manager and run this code. It's going to pass off the tile game object, 
tile that it struck. All right, that's looking good. And first, we're going to need to get the tile's name, right? Because we can parse that because each tile is a is the word tile on a number. So let's create an integer variable. This funky thing I'm about to do just means get rid of all non numeral characters, all non numbers. And what it's saying here is rejects isn't working because show potential fixes. We need a regular expression, text regular expression at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. If you didn't see that, it's now up here, adds it for us. Very nice. And so now that we have the tile number, we grab, we took the tile's name and ripped out the integer number from it. We also want to know the hit count. And then we're going to use a for each loop and we're going to go through each array of the tile numbers. So in our enemy ships, we're going to go through each tile number array. What's this saying? Oh, it's never used yet. We'll take care of that. All right. So So for each tile number array in enemy ships, now what is enemy ships, right? This is yelling at me right now. And that's because enemy ships is not declared within this class, right? Enemy ships is created over here in our enemy script, enemy ships. We need to call this because this is going to return what we need. This list here gets returned. So. Let's go ahead and call it, and I'm actually going to use the same name for the variable over here. Game manager, which game manager starts up? I'm going to, let's do, this is going to be private because there's no need for anything else to access enemy ships here. And we're going to define that enemy ships down within this, our start function enemy ships is going to be equal to enemy script dot place place enemy ships that will place the ships and it will give us this uh, list and the list again is an array it's a list of arrays each array holds the coordinates of each ship's peg or each ship's single location right four dot location five dot location whatever all right that being said now way back down here so for each text tile number array in enemy ship so for each boat and then each number in that what are we going to want to be doing to it? Well, we're going to need to go through each number in the actual arrays themselves. Because right now we're just grabbing each array from enemy ship, each boat from enemy ship. And at this point, we can use for standard for loop here. And now once I'm going through this loop, I want to know if the tile that was just hit matches the tile within the list of tiles that enemy ships are on. So I'm going to check each enemy ship tile and say, hey, is this matching the tile that was hit? So if so, if this index of the tile number array, which is the ship, the enemy ship, is equal to the tile number that we just struck well then that would be a hit i'm just going to do like minus five uh that might come up later it might not it's so i know that that was a struck in an in index of the array and then i want to increase our hit count okay. else so let's do an else if If tile number array already equals negative five, and by that might come up later, I mean right now, 
it's going to, that means we have already struck that tile. And we also want to keep track of that right now because we're seeing if the boat is actually sunk. So if it is already equal to negative five, let's keep a hit count. All right, that will do it for this loop. But immediately underneath it now, I need to make sure to, to check whether it is sunk. So if, if it's equal to the ship's length, right, which would be the tile num array dot length then it has sunk and we would want to keep track of our enemy ship count and we'll have to subtract from that okay and we're going to need to add this so up here set up okay so let's do and this is private if you leave that off it's automatically private anyways um, and then player as well while we're at it. Okay. So enemy ship count minus minus, and then we're going to change the text at the top. Let's see if I gave that a name. Top text. Perfect. Sounds good to me. That's what I was writing. Uh, let's capitalize all this song, Grah! and we just need to give it a public variable. We'll do that in a second for the top text. And then what we're going to be working on shortly is fires, but we'll get there in a second. But I'm just going to say enemy fire, kind of a mental note. And then let's go ahead and set the tile color. Sure, let's set the, hmm, I'm going to wait on color. So... All right, let's do an else because we're going to do a few things with tile color that I think is super cool. Uh, let's do an else though and say top text dot text hit because if they didn't sink the boat, we know that they hit it, right? Because we asked uh, the only reason check hit would have been called. Let's do it contains because actually we need to make sure that we hit it. So this for loops great. Let's above it though do an if tile num. Oh, this will work really well actually. Tile num array contains. There we are. Because now we can see before searching through it, although this kind of searches through it, uh, before searching through it, we can check to see if it's actually there. So we're going to from the get go do a tile num array contains tile num. And it thinks we don't have this show potential fixes. We do need to add link. So I'm going to hit enter and it will auto do that. And then it will allow us to use contains. Oh, no, that's not the fix I wanted. Okay, well, let's try that again. That's the one we want. There we are. And all that did again is just add this up here. We need to use link. Okay, so now I want this if I need all the stuff I did inside of it. So all this four stuff, just going to control X, control V. Now we're going to check if this tile number array, if this ship actually contains that title. So we instantly know there was an actual hit. And that's what lets us go ahead and set up the situation that if we didn't sync it, we do know that there was a miss and we can put miss on the screen. There will be another color change here, but we should also, while we're at it under this else, do a break. Because if neither of those are true, we don't want to loop forever. And then we should do a if here, if hit count equals equals zero, they missed. And if they missed, well, sad day for them, but we're going to set colors. So I'm going to just put again a note to colors. We'll do that all at once, I think. And then I'm going to do top text dot text. And we got to give them some grief for missing, of course. Boom. And great. What we'll end up doing at the end of this is invoking the end of the player's turn. I'm going to comment this out, but just to give you an idea of where this will be going. We're going to invoke this function, end player turn. We don't have it. That's why I commented it out. And then I'll wait one second, which will be a float. All right, let's go ahead up, head up to the top and set up a top text variable. So this will be the HUD again. 
public top text. Oh, public text is equal to top text. Okay, perfect. And let's save all of this complicated stuff. Shrink this down a bit and click. Let's make sure to get those defined within the game manager. Here we are, and I have all this stuff now, which is great. So I can drag my enemy missile over, I can drag my missile over, I can grab my wood deck, which is... Oh, right there, yikes. And finally, I can get the top text. And with all that, let me make sure to save all of this. Good, no, not save as, just save. <laughs> and actually, I can also go ahead and hide these. I don't need these. I have these as prefab, so I'm going to delete that missile and then this guy as well. Goodbye. And let's take a look back at where we were. Making some good progress. Meh, good. And this is a good place to pause. So in the next video, we're going to build out a bit more of the mission functionality and add some, well, some sort of intelligence to our enemy class. Onward.